Come on up here and show your stuff now. Show your stuff. Come on. Nice piece of horse flesh. I've seen others to equal. Well, price is pretty steep. That's Annabelle's price. You shave at a hundred and we can do us some business. Damn it, Aaron Cartwright, you run this ranch now. Right now, I'm just a salesman. The hell you say? You're enjoying this. The both of you. <laughs> well, horse trading does spice the day. Well, I got better to do with my day. I thank you for showing it to me. Well, I'll just call Mr. Bruxton. Bruxton ain't buying that horse. Well, Annie said if you didn't. You got a deal. 250. <laughs> I always said Ben Cartwright got one hell of an addition to the family when little Joe married her. Mr. Hoskins, I have a confession to make. I was going to let you have her for 200, but I wasn't sure just how badly you wanted her. Annabelle was. You can settle things with Mr. Mack. <laughs> yeah, can I borrow your pencil, Mr. Hoskins? Thank you, sir. <laughs> Here you are, Annie. 250. You did it. <laughs> you know, I darn near let him have it for 200. <laughs> Excuse me, Ann. Mr. Cartwright, it sure is a pleasure to see you again, sir. Right on time, Mr. Dunson. Glad to see you're a man of your word. Well, thank you. My mother told me, always be on time and always speak the truth. <laughs> I, uh, understand you're having second thoughts about the Amstead Mining Company's proposal. Matter of fact, I am. There's some points I'm not all that sure about. Well, then, let's talk them over. One of the last things I remember my brother saying was... That north section over there that you plan to use for your mining site? He always said that that was best left to God and eternity. That's true. Nothing much to take a man up there but some elk hunting. Except now, there's a chance that this could be the means to provide jobs for a lot of people in Virginia City who could use the work. Yeah, I understand a lot of the old-time miners are really hurting. Hurting is hardly the word for it, Mr. Cartwright. You know, most of those old mines are played out. I can't tell you how many men are without jobs without the means to provide for their families. Why, Virginia City itself is in danger of being blown away, becoming a deserted ghost town, such as has happened to so many other places. It started out as mining camps. Mr. Dunson, I believe you've convinced me. The last thing I want to do is deny jobs to people who want to work. I'm glad to hear that. Mr. Cartwright, there are a lot of folks around here will be very grateful to you for that. Good day to you, sir. Good day to you, Mr. Dunson. Where the hell do you think you're going? 
Are you talking to me, mister? I'm talking to you. You're on private property. You've been on private property for the last 10 miles. And who, may I ask, are you? The name's Charlie Polk. You're on the Ponderosa Ranch, and I'm ranch foreman. Now, what are you doing here? I'm heading to an area called Wichaka. And this is the only access to it. Now, well, you got that part right. But you ain't heading there. You're turning around. Well, Mr. Polk, maybe when you have a look at these, uh, papers, you'll change your mind. The hell you say? No, the state of Nevada says. And so does Aaron Cartwright. My permit is to dig. And we have uh, Cartwright's uh, permission for Amstead to cross this territory as necessary. Uh, my papers, please. Mike, go on ahead. Charlie, walk it into Mr. Cartwright's head to agree to something like that. Now he calls himself Charlie Polk. You know him? I sure know about him. Morning, Charlie. Do you mind telling me what you were thinking when you gave them mining people access to the Ponderosa? Among other things, the jobs it would bring to the folks in Virginia City. You had no right doing it. Now you hold on right there, Charlie. The last Charlie. thing Ben Cartwright would have wanted is to see that North Country torn up. If you've got to hear it one more time, I am not Ben Cartwright. That's for certain sure. But I am running this ranch, and if you don't like the way I'm running it, feel free to leave. Now you listen to me. Your brother gave you your responsibility, and he gave me mine. No way I'm leaving. Good, I'm glad to hear it. My responsibility is running the Ponderosa. Yours is to help me. And if any trouble occurs, to use those guns of yours, which are fast becoming obsolete, thank God. Fast becoming, but not yet. Do you have any idea what will happen to the Ponderosa if even a rumor of a gold strike leaks out? reckon you don't. Maybe you spent too much time painting pictures with that friend of yours in the South Pacific. <laughs> Annie, that is a mighty pretty hat. Thank you. Aaron, what is there between you two? Ben looked on Charlie like a... I know, like a son. Annie, maybe it doesn't bother you that we don't know everything about Charlie. But it does bother me. Well, all I know is that... Charlie Pope would lay down his life for the Cartwright family. He's been loyal and devoted to this family ever since Ben saved his life. That's all I need to know. That's all, Annie. You and he make for a great feeling of security here in the ranch. Now, you haven't forgotten that we have a shopping date, have you? Are you ready? As ready as I'll ever be. We don't come in judgment of Lonnie. We come because we love her. We've been taught that from dust we all come, to dust we shall return. This was your Mars, Josh. Yes, sir. Sorry, Josh. Terribly sorry. 
can hate her no more. You'll be fine, Josh. You'll be fine. Yes, sir. As soon as I find me a place called the Ponderosa. Gonna kill me a man named Cartwright. Looks like the Wild West still lives. <laughs> Don't worry, the sheriff will cool them off in a hurry. Morning, Gus. Isn't that pretty? Very nice, Gus. Thank you. Benjamin will like these very much. Well, that's good. I'm real glad. You can wrap them up before. Right. Hello, Mrs. Cartwright. Mr. Cartwright. Hello, Jennifer. How pretty you look today. Thank you. Is it true that Ben will really be back on Wednesday? Well, no, we're not quite sure about that, Jenny. Well, he's only teasing you. Of course, Benjamin will be home Wednesday. Do you think he'll remember me? He's been away at that school for so long. Jennifer Benjamin would never forget you. Jenny, you've got nothing to worry about. Well, I um, better be getting back to the bank before my grandpa misses me. Say hello for us. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Well, on that new grass by sundown, Charlie. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Dean, you'll get a crossing, will you? I thought I warned you about using a spade bit again. It's all gonna work on this damn jughead. I told you what'd happen if I caught you using it again. You told me. Step down. Like hell I will. <laughs> hey, that big a fool. your pay, then get off the Ponderosa. Mm, something really smells good in here. Usually does this time of day. Too late to ask for some of Mr. Mack's peaches with dinner? Menu was planned last night. You said nothing then. Mr. Mack's peaches ain't on the menu. Aaron just wanted me to ask. All the years me and Ben Cartwright trailed cattle, he never once stuck his nose in my chuck wagon. 
Ain't nobody never complained about my cooking either. Least way, not more than once. I understand that. Just take this inside. And he never stuck his nose in Hop Singh's kitchen neither. <laughs> Next time you do your own dirty work. No peaches, huh? Thanks. No peaches. Well, when Bench gets back, we'll have him to run with the ball. I understand that old pirate never refused him a thing. It was the same thing with his father. Joseph could charm Mr. Mack out of almost anything. Anything. I'm not packed. <laughs> Come on, jump in. In this thing? Come on, oh, let's no. get out of the weather. Oh, all right, I always wanted to. Boy, your ma's gonna have a fit. Whoa! Whoa! What's keeping all that racket out here? Put the cat drug in! Mr. Mack! All right! Oh! <laughs> Boy, it's Welcome been a long home. time. Good to see you. Good to you. see you. Well, you look at what's come home and all grown up, too. Hmm? A man to ride the river with. President Roosevelt said I was to tell you hello first thing I got back. Mama! It's your Mama. man! Mama! Oh. oh! So good to see you! It's good to see you. We really didn't expect you until Wednesday. I know, I know. What in the world is this? I had to get it out of the rain. Oh, I don't mean that. I mean, where'd you get it? I bought it in St. Louis. You what? Well, Blair sent me the money for it. How was your trip? Great. Once in a lifetime, thanks to you. Why didn't you tell me? I just didn't want you to worry, Ma, through every mile. That I would. Mama, President Roosevelt gave me something for you. For me? Yeah, it's in one of my suitcases. Why don't you go on inside? I'll be right back. Come on. Welcome home, son. Thanks, so Uncle Mr. Roosevelt says some things take time to get done. Even for the president. Dead, Mama. For heroism above and beyond the call of duty at San Juan Hill. To little Joe Cartwright. I wish Grandfather lived to know. Why did he have to go to that war? Annie. He saw it as a matter of personal pride. He answered his country's call. I'm sorry. I don't mean to go on. Annie. Let go of him. I'm not holy. Little Joe is gone. Teddy Roosevelt's Rough Riders in San Juan Hill are a lot of miles and a lot of years away. <laughs> if the samplings are what I expect, you can plan on hiring in two weeks. I'll get word to you. You can set up and test the equipment that quick? 
I have my best crew. Just make sure that the ones you hire know that they're going to be up there for as long as I say. Nobody comes back until we hit Bubble Bust. up into a fine stew tonight. I'm proud of you. We got here, wall faced cow butchers. We got you dead to rights. You know what happened to cow thieves in this part of the country? The fact is, you was taken what ain't yours. Please listen. You'll listen when you're hanging at the end of this rope. Hold on, boys. You weren't gonna butcher her, I swear. What's trouble, boys? All on the control, Charlie. We got us a couple of cow thieves. Milk! You were taking milk. I got a child. My wife can't nurse it. It's hungry. For that, they're gonna hang us. Nobody's gonna hang anybody. Take the cow. What? You heard what Mr. Cartwright said. Now get back to work. Write him a note of ownership, will you, Charlie? Sure thing. And water her a couple of days. By then, her bag will be so full, she'll be glad to get rid of it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. My pleasure. <laughs> Can't resist the pretty face, huh? Come off it, Charlie. I really think you did all right, Ben. You, you got any more of that pie, Mr. Mack? Any more room in there? I'll make some.
keys in here. Hmm? Oh, for starters, I'll hand you your ear. Now hand that hog leg over. Nice and easy. Easy. Now you just march yourself inside, mister. Come on! Caught this yahoo skulking around outside the house. From the looks of things, I say he was fixing to use this on somebody in here. I'd have used it too, but not to bushwhack. That's easy to say, now you've been caught. When he dies, I want him to know who killed him. When who dies? Pa's car right. Pa's? What are you talking about? I'm his bastard son. That's insane. 25 years. My ma carried this in her Bible. She died. She believed in him with all her heart. For 25 years, she made herself believe that he had an honest reason for not coming back to her. All those years, she waited for him. All those years, she kept his name secret. Even from me. With her dying breath, she allowed me as how I had a right to know a name beside Josh. Well, I don't need it. The name Cartwright's an abomination. All that I want is to face down the man who shamed my ma. That's a mighty tall tale, son. Call it what you will. My ma, she named her man. There was never another as long as she lived. And get some more pie. Mr. Mac, get him a bunk for the night. And I want to see him first thing in the morning. Yes, sir. Come on. life. She would have drowned for sure if he hadn't swum after her. The river's force was very strong that day, but he held on to her. He held on to her until she was able to crawl onto some rocks, and then he had nothing left. Oh, he wanted to go back. He wanted to marry her mom and bring her to the Ponderosa. Josh, you are a Cartwright. The Ponderosa is your home. I don't know that I want it. The birthright or the name. Stay a while. Give yourself a chance to find out. Give us all a chance to get to know one another. If you don't mind, I'd like to be alone. Dealing. Once this test proves out, I want the pipe and the hose laid down all the way back up to the mine site in three days. And then get everything else out of here. You'll have it, Bob. I will. 
or I'll have your hide. I want core samples by Friday. We are finishing before two weeks. You ready, Anderson? Ready, Bob. All right! Stand by! Stand by! There! Let her go! Go! <laughs> You don't know if he's telling the truth. I mean, so what if he's gone? Who cares? But you realize we're all the family he has left. His mom is gone. He's all alone. Put yourself in his spot. Now, how would you feel? Sure, he thinks Haas wronged his mom. But I failed him, too. I should have made him stay. Clarence. There's nothing you could have done. I mean, maybe he's better off without us. Son, that boy may be the closest thing you'll ever have to a brother. He's part of you, part of the Cartwrights. We can't turn our backs on that. If he ever does come back, and I hope he does, I want you to look on him as a brother, not as a stranger. Well, I don't know, Uncle Aaron. I mean, I know the good book says, honor thy father and thy mother. But it doesn't say anything about uncles. Of course I will. Is that a real place? Oh, that's real, all right. That's a little cove off the west coast of Tahiti. Oh, it's beautiful. <sighs> Do you ever miss the islands? I miss it. Tell you what I don't miss. Oh, it might shock you. Well, I don't know. Try me. All right. <laughs> I was a sea captain, you know, same as Ben. Uh-huh. But what you don't know is that I was regarded in almost every port we put into as the hardest drinking, woman chasing, two fisted brawler that ever stepped off a ship. <laughs> no, I didn't know that. 
What about the painting? You know, I think painting saved my life. And that's when you met Gauguin? I met him in his favorite bar. This was his. You know, I really miss the old guy. Well, not for the drinking and the other things, but for the painting times we had together. Mm. That's when it all began. Mm. Well, I would still like you to paint a picture of me someday. There it is. It's me. She doesn't have any clothes on top. What you meant by those other things. You enjoyed those islands, you and your friend Gauguin. See some feathers of some of the boys. Get these horses watered and fed. Chuck them for cuts. You got it, Charlie. We'll pick out the ones we're going to break for the army later. <laughs> Anybody want a shot at that black? Army's order was for top stock. But this one I want to keep. Still gonna ride him, kid? You can have my seat on him. Son, that's a campy road horse if I ever saw one. I'm gonna ride him, Charlie. You're taking a big bite. Just watch me. <laughs> He'll pick you cleaner than Scoot and won't leave you a nickel change. Like you say, not clean or nothing. Ain't you just like your daddy? Bill, do it, boy. Well, I sure don't want to miss this. Feathers, come give me a hand. Oh, <laughs> 
Annabelle, let me help you. Here you go, Aaron. I got him. I got him. Daddy? Got him. All right, let him have his box. You're mighty handy with that rope, boy. You back to stay? Who am I? You always use a good hand. Can I try him? Show me. I'll take it. You better know what you're doing, kid. I think I do. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, oh. Good boy. Nothing to be afraid of. Nice ride. Thanks. 
you plan on staying? If you'll have me. That was a mighty fine ride, Joshua. Thank you, ma'am. The name is Annabelle. We don't much stand for ceremony here on the Ponderosa. Yes, ma'am. We've been riding around some. Sort of getting used to one another. Well, that's a good idea. Since he's your horse now. You mean I get to keep him? You mean he's really mine now? <laughs> I doubt if anybody could take him away from you. I'm glad you decided to stay here at the Ponderosa, Josh. Did uh, you happen to know my father? I knew your father very well. He was your Uncle Joseph's best man at our wedding. What was he like? I mean, my father. Hans Cartwright was the gentlest, kindest man in the whole world. The strongest, too. <laughs> I believe you take after him quite a bit. I never once got to see him. I know. I'm sorry. He would have been proud to have a big strapping son like you. Joshua, if you ever need anybody to talk to, I'm here. Thank you, ma'am. Miss Annabelle. Lundine. Yeah? Break out the cores. Get four men on drilling samples. You can start up there. Anderson. Come on. These trees need clearing. That's where we're going to run the water lines. I want you to stack the hydraulic pipe so we can get at them. I want the assaying equipment set up as soon as they're finished with that shack. Yes, sir. Offload this wagon. Do it now. Make your mark. Work is expected to begin soon. A notice will be posted tomorrow. You will all be signed. Amstead's begun to sign on workers. Order there. Morning, Chad. What's Amstead? They've got a mining operation on the north border of the Ponderosa. How come they can do that? Uncle Aaron gave them access through the ranch. To start a mining operation? Some people feel it's the best thing to happen here in years. Good for the people working the mine site. And for the businesses here in town where they'll be spending the money. Uh, ben, when you're through at Morton's, take a little time and show Josh around. Okay, Uncle Aaron. Josh, pick out anything you need at Morton's and tell the old coot to put it on the Ponderosa account. Good morning, Mrs. Jones. Good morning, Mr. Cartwright. May I say that this mining operation has been a godsend to our family. We're grateful for your hand in it. And may I add my amen to that? Yes, ma'am. Good day, Mr. Cartwright. Good day. Good day, ladies. There's more people than I've ever seen in one place before. Yeah, the way do we get to Carson City? It's bigger? Twice the size of more. My, oh my. Hey, Mr. Morton. Benji. Oh, so good to see you. See you. Now, look what your Uncle Aaron has done to uh, This is my cousin Josh, Mr. Morton. Hey. I see the family resemblance. 
Uh, what can we get for you? Well, I don't... Uh, Mr. Morton, why don't we get a couple pairs of boots? Uh, get a hat. Well, 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 hold, hold on. You please. hold on, young fella. Anybody tied to a Cartwright name has got an open door around here. Your uncle, your uncle Harry, see what he's done? See the sign over here? That's his doing. Come to check this out. Good on you. Your lifesaver for the house. Again. I promise I'll make this trip to my next allowance. Not if it doesn't, just don't tell your mom. Hello, Aaron. Morning, Mr. Sills. Jenny. Good morning. I heard that Ben came back home driving a brand new automobile. Matter of fact, he drove me to town. He's over at Martin's doing a little shopping. Oh, good. Well, maybe I'll see him later then. Bye. Bye, Jenny. Oh, my precious child. She's afraid Ben won't have time for her now that he met all those fancy Eastern gals. <laughs> well, sir, I guess you know they're calling you the man of the hour. Well, now, don't you think that's overdoing it just a little? Well, it was a talk at the meeting hall last night. And there also was a little bit of talk about a railroad spur line across the Ponderosa in the mining site. Well, Manstead did mention something about that, but nothing's been decided yet. Well, a railroad's a lot more practical than freight hauling. It means a lot more work for a lot more people. Not much sense getting people's hopes up too soon. Well, that's true. That's true. And there's no harm in being somewhere around the beginning of it if it happens either, if you get my point. Don't be a stranger, Aaron. I don't know, Benj. What that mining outfit's doing to the land sure ain't making it look any better. The North Country's not used for anything except hunting. I oh, won't hurt that. Theodore Roosevelt and Grandpa used to hunt out there just a few years ago. Who? The President of the United States. Do you get one? Matter of fact, he did. Come on. Benj! Jennifer, it's so good to see you. Jennifer, uh, this is my cousin Josh. Jennifer Sills. Hello. Aren't you the sporty one? What was your name? Uh, uh, Josh. Jennifer. Jennifer! Yes, ma'am. Jennifer. Well, if you'll excuse me, I have an appointment. When will I see you again? I know. Gramps is having a surprise birthday party for me the week after next. The 10th. Which, of course, you would not have remembered. Will you come, both of you? Yes, ma'am. Jennifer. Wonderful. Bye. She's nice. You, uh, been friends long? Yeah. Yeah, we've been friends long. Get on your horse.
that's your first warning. There ain't no others. Now get up and cut brush for Cullen. Yes, sir. First wagons roll to the processing plant in Yerrington next week. You still stand by your essay estimates? I stand by whatever I say. Don't worry, fool. It's gonna be a big payoff. Very big. I can tear up those excavation permits. Nobody's gonna say a thing about the hydraulic mining. What about that Charlie Polk? Now, don't you lose any sleep over him. He is my problem. Ben Cartwright, I knew, would never even have considered it. Get no argument on that from me. Little thing called progress, Charlie. Hmm. Big thing called Amstead Mining, you mean? Times are changing. And the Ponderosa can't help but change along with them. What's all this talk about a railroad spur? That's all it is, Annie. Just talk. Y'all mark my words, yeah? Once them railroaders get a foothold in here, there'll be people coming from every direction. What, on the land like they owned it? I've seen it happen before. Mm-hmm. And that means the end of the Ponderosa. And don't tell me that's progress. I got another word for it. What are you talking about? Well, hell, if you don't know what that means, what are you doing on the Ponderosa? Mr. Mack. He didn't mean that. I think maybe he did. You startled me. Sorry. I didn't mean to. How was your ride? Oh, it's great, as usual. Kayla, you do it. Thanks. You think we were a little hard on Aaron last night? Maybe. Then maybe he deserved it. He's a good man, Charlie. He means well. Sometimes being a good man isn't enough. There's times when a man has to be tough, hard. Like you? Like Ben Cartwright was, when he had to be. Like the time he stood up to that mob and cut you down from that rope? I think Aaron would have done the same thing. Little Joe. 
worst part is I don't even know if he's alive or dead. I know. Well, I better get back to work. Thanks, Charlie. Just made some fresh coffee, Mr. Cartwright. Would you like a cup? No, thanks. I want to apologize for the way I spoke to you the other evening. I was totally out of line. No need to apologize. We all make mistakes. This is true. But I'll tell you one thing, Mr. Mack. I'm going to stay here and do what my brother asked. And I don't care what you or anybody else thinks. Now, I would like a cup of that coffee. Some of those damn peaches you're always talking about. <laughs> Coming up. <laughs> hey, Benj. Yeah? What do you figure the Ponderosa's worth? Why, well, you figuring cashing in your share? No. I was just wondering. It'll be hard to say. I'm sure a whole lot more than us Cartwrights. Mr. Mack. Charlie Polk and the rest of the ranch hands put together could ever spend a lifetime. Why? I never wanted more, except what I needed to live day to day. I suppose some men get to owning and, and having a lot. It's just natural for them to want more. What blazes are you talking about? Just seems to me that the only thing old Aaron Cartwright thinks about is money. Now what's that supposed to mean? More than being willing to destroy the land just to make a pile of money. Who's destroying what land for what money? Your Uncle Aaron. Why do you think you brought that mining outfit in here? Tearing up and raping the land. You're a liar! Shut up! Now hold on, Bent! Who's think you're doing? This stupid jackass said some terrible things about Uncle Aaron. All I said was the God's truth. Yeah, we're nothing but a bad mouth liar. You stay put, Benj. Or I'll hang you up in that barbed wire fence to dry. That goes for you, too. Now, what's this about Aaron? He said Uncle Aaron was raping the Ponderosa for money. Raping? Is that what you said? That's what I said. And if you come with me, I'll prove it to you. Let's just do that, boy. Let's go. Get Aaron. He's got to see this. You look like you've seen a ghost or something. What we've seen is a lot worse than a ghost. We just rode in from the north border. Uncle Aaron, you should see what those Hampstead workers are doing. They are destroying the land. Raping it is what I call it. I don't quite understand what you mean by that. Well, then maybe you better stop whatever it is you're doing, ride out with us, and see for yourself.
The Hampstead Mine. Do you know what they're doing up there? I know now. It's all over Virginia City. They're killing the country. <laughs> Let's go. You know, you're a clever little man, Poole. You kept the factor of that hydraulic mine in a secret. You kept the men you hired away from town. Gareth Monduth, if you please. If they had their hit data packed up and left. But you knew there'd be damn few objections in the face of a major gold strike. Mr. Sills, Mr. Mayor, we did not ask to meet with you to be subjected to this. We came to discuss our company's offer to share with you the advantages of a railroad spur line we are planning for our mine site. What you're saying is you're going to need these people's help in dealing with the Cartwrights. Are you saying that Amstead Mining is trying to buy all these good citizens? If that's what you're implying, sir. I object most strenuously. Just a moment, folks. I'd like to say something. Mr. Mayor, Amstead's goal, with the help of several highly placed state officials, is to open this part of Nevada to settlement and make this city the hub of future growth. Now, there is no denial that we are concerned that the special interests of the Cartwright family will cause us problems. Mister, if Aaron Cartwright's opinion of you and your tactics are anything like mine, then you can count on problems. I'd be glad to second that, Sheriff. Now listen to this, all of you, Mr. Dunstan, your last wagon has crossed the Ponderosa. I'm shutting you down. Now, Aaron, there's more happening than you know about. Do you realize that if you shut the mine down, you'll be putting something like 200 people out of work? Not to mention the effect on a good number of the town's businessmen. I'm sorry about that, Mr. Mayor. But I will not be a part of what Amstead is doing to that North Country. Then allow me to also point out, sir, the effect it would have on the future growth of this part of Nevada. Terrible, allow terrible. me to point this out. Those mining permits I agreed to were for excavation samplings only. Nothing was ever mentioned about hydraulic mining. We've been told all about that, Aaron, a man has to be realistic. Let's stop all this damn pussyfooting around. We're talking about gold here. Gold! 100% pure, shiny gold. The kind that can make everybody here rich. All of you, rich! Yeah, yeah. Mr. Cartwright, it's time you learn the facts of life. You are holding up progress. It's time, I believe, for you to be a little more cooperative. I say this one time, and one time only. If any Amstead wagon tries to cross the Ponderosa, it'll be turned back. And if we have to use force, we'll use it. I'll back any play you want to make. I was counting on it. Right there! Now turn him around! You're making a mistake, Poke. 
You've been shut down! I think if we talked, you'd see... Turn him around! This isn't the end of it, cowboy. Mike, stop it here. Now, what the Cartwrights need is some solid evidence of just how worked up people are, like what's happening out here. Whatever you do, Mr. Dunstan, Amstead Mining cannot be held at fault. You can't blame the company for what some laid-off, disgruntled miners do, can you? Don't forget to... I got a lot of my own money invested in this thing. I'm not Nathaniel Amstead sitting on his butt in San Francisco counting his wealth. I'm out here myself. And I'll be damned if I'm gonna just fold in the wind because of this Charlie Poke. What makes you think this Charlie Poke will back off? Nine years of running. That's what Aaron Cartwright, I understand. He's some kind of a, an artist, a painter. <laughs> there won't be any trouble. Tomorrow morning, first light, I want my best crew out of the mine, sir. Mike, go on ahead. It's a sorry damn thing, I must say. And, and the cart rides... Or a big disappointment. That's right. right, right. Sorry, yeah, you're right. Sure. Yeah. Now, you men know what Amstead was doing was illegal. All I know is I got a lot of credit out there, which I ain't never going to collect. That's right. I'm going to come back to And the bank loan I took is going to cost me my house. Now, nobody well, made you take out that loan any more than they made Gus or any of the others hand out all that credit. We had reason to believe we'd be making some good pay. Yeah. Money. I heard this town has dug a hole so deep that they'll never get out. Yeah, and it's yeah. the Cartwrights doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's talk you might not like, Sheriff, but it's true. And there's something else that's true. There are some likely to do a whole lot more than just talk. Yeah. Well, Homer, comings and goings the way they are in this place, you'd be the first to know about that. So I'm counting on you to put the word out. Now, anybody steps foot on that Ponderosa to cause trouble. And I'm gonna make it the sorriest damn day of their life. I've been hearing talk all over town about getting even with you folks. When I get it squelched in one place, it crops up in another. As long as it stays, talk. And if it doesn't, we'll protect ourselves. The law will. You'd be the first I'd expect to accept that, Aaron. Chad, you've got six deputies, and there's miles of open territory for those people to do their getting even if they've a mind. What I'm saying is, it's going to be hard enough for the Samstead thing to heal. Now, God forbid there's any shooting. I'm asking you to back off of this thing. You let me handle it. Now, if there's any damage done, I'll find out who's responsible. That rustling you hear is Ben Cartwright turning over in his grave. See, he never was one to back off when him or his got stumped. Never. Those days are gone, Mr. Mech. Things are different now. That may be. But Ben Cartwright's charge to me was to protect his family and his land. I'm gonna do just that. I'm the law in Virginia City. And nobody there or here is gonna take that law in their own hands. Two things, Sheriff. This isn't Virginia City. It's the Ponderosa. And it's late. I'm turning in.
Charlie Poe. Now let's talk. What the hell are you doing here? The talk the other day was kind of short. You were the one carrying a gun. This time we'll talk a little longer. You remember a town called Gothenburg? Guess a thing like that a man never forgets. Huh? Folks there sure remember you. After it was all over, there were some that said their one regret was Ben Cartwright coming in and cutting you down from the rope they had strung around your neck. Well, you're not going to have Ben Cartwright around to save you again. When we get through with you and the Ponderosa, you're going to wish they had finished the job on you back in Gothenburg. It's late. Turn it in. Well, I just wanted to tell you what you said to the sheriff. Well, I'm with you. So is Josh. The sheriff was right, boy. Those days are gone. If it wasn't for my promise to your grandfather, I'd hang up my gun and never touch it again. Charlie? I'll see you in the morning.
drop that iron. Now step down. This is where it ends, Mr. Polk. You're a dead man. This time for good. Anytime, Charlie. Anytime. And I want you to have those jobs, but not at the expense of destroying the land. Listen to me, all of you, listen to me. I gave access across the Ponderosa so you could have those jobs. I didn't charge Amstead Mining anything for that access. I gave it willingly. I gave it because I believed. I believed Amstead Mining when they promised to make sample excavations only. That's what they said. Sample excavations only. Well, they violated that promise. They violated the law. And most of all, they viciously violated the land. Who cares? That's enough, Cartwright. You all know that hydraulic mining is against the law in the state of Nevada. And you all know what that kind of mining does to the land. Ben Cartwright would never have allowed that to happen. But it did happen. And now part of the Ponderosa has been destroyed. And perhaps part of me along with it. But I'll tell you all one thing. If Amstead Mining wishes to continue their search for gold, they will do so in a lawful manner and they will replant and restore the land they have desecrated. I've asked Mr. Amstead to come here from San Francisco so he can tell you directly what his plans are. I came here to tell you that I made a tragic mistake. I thought that I could entrust some of my responsibilities to certain of my employees. Clell Dunstan was one of those employees. And as you know, he paid the full price for his deceit and dishonesty but that does not excuse me so i pledge to you sir that with your help and the help of these good people amstead mining will indeed replant the soil that we have destroyed and never again commit the sin of hydraulic mining now one thing more i know you need jobs and i'm not going to give up amstead mining will continue its search for gold but this time, we will sink a proper shaft and build a complex of tunnels. Now that's going to be 
far more expensive than I had anticipated, perhaps twice as expensive, but it will provide twice as many jobs. I only hope I don't run out of money along the way. To make sure that doesn't happen, the Ponderosa will pay for all your additional expenses. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Hey, will you come here with my hat? Good night, Jerry. Good night. Good night. Man, sound just like Ben himself when he gave that speech of his? Mr. Mack, I got a feeling he's gonna sound more like him every day. <laughs> you want a bench? Come on and get it. Give it back, <laughs> or I'll get you. <sighs> Come on. Now there's a pair to draw to. Anyways, they sure answered the question about how many cartwrights we got around here. You know what? What? I'm sure glad you're a cartwright. Me too. <laughs> 